Welcome to Positive Mind. We human beings have an innate need to belong. Just like animals, so does humans. We're born to be with other people. Through this pandemic, that need has been threatened. Today, we're going to talk about belonging and what you can do to help meet that need despite the pandemic. Stay tuned. I felt lost. All alone. Afraid. So I opened a book. And their smiling faces reassured me that I am not alone. I am connected to them. I have inherited their smiles, their eyes, their laughs. Their legacies live within me. I am special, and I belong to the past, the present, and the future. These legacies we create travel with those whom we connect with, with family, with friends, even with acquaintances. Our lives are full of connections, and with connections comes belonging. And with belonging comes the truth of who you are. A special person. A loved person. A person with great potential and purpose. person who can make a change. I look at these smiling faces and they give me hope, courage, and a greater understanding of who I am. Welcome back. Today we're talking about our innate need to belong. We are social creatures and we need to be with other people. But because of the pandemic and the global crisis, how are we going to meet this need of belonging? It is very important that we continue to have social relations despite the fact that we can't have um, social gatherings because of the social distancing our relationships have decreased. Now, because of the social distancing, because of the pandemic, there are going to be a sense of isolation. Those people that really need to belong, which is all of us, we're going to start feeling lonely, and therefore, this is going to increase our stress and contribute to increase in depression. The need to belong is something that we all as humans have and we will continue to have. This is the ability to connect with other people, to feel the need to be with other people means that we need to be validated. We have to have the face-to-face -face contact and the ability to be recognized and appreciated through other people. There are people that have higher need to belong than others, but at this time, all of us have to live with the idea that we need to isolate, not have people around us all the time, and therefore, 
what is this going to happen? What's going to happen to our innate need to belong? Would it decrease? Will we be lonely? Is this going to increase our depression? Is this going to increase our isolation? Our self-worth, our self-value. To belong could happen anywhere. What we need to concentrate on is how we're going to meet that need to belong using the idea of virtual reality. Yes, we have to be virtually connected to other people. Yes, we need to become more creative in order for us to have a need and have it be met. There is no way that you have a need to be connected and keep yourself at home because you don't believe that virtually that's going to satisfy you. We have to be flexible and we have to be able to make sure that that need is met despite what. You see a lot of people having virtual meetings, for example. You see a lot of people connecting through social media. I know at one time we were talking about how people are very addicted to social media, that they no longer have any real friends or face-to-face -face meetings. But despite the, the effort and despite of the situation that we're in, we have to find ways to be able to connect to other people using different methods and decreasing our isolation. If we don't do that, we're putting ourselves at risk of mental illnesses. We're going to have depression, we're going to have anxiety, we're going to have loneliness, and when this pandemic is over, we're going to have a very difficult time reconnecting. So stay tuned. When I come back, I'll give you some ideas of what you can do and how you can be flexible to meet your belonging needs. Welcome back. We're talking about our need to belong. We're talking about despite the pandemic, we can try to break that sense of loneliness and be able to connect despite the changes of how we connect. Yes, we no longer are doing face to face. Yes, we can meet our friends in cafes and restaurants. Yes, at this time, we have to be a little bit more isolated. But that does not mean that your isolation should turn into some sort of a mental disorder. You can't engage in this isolation and not put yourself at risk of being depressed. Remember, I said that we have an innate need to belong. But when we isolate ourselves for so long, now that the thought is, how am I going to reconnect with these individuals? Am I really going to feel the need to be with them? Am I going to be comfortable being isolated and depressed? And therefore, I'm not even going to be bothered to reconnect. Remember, we all need to connect. And if we don't do it now, even if it's virtual, you're going to lose the sense of this belonging and you're going to increase your loneliness and you're going to increase your chances of becoming depressed. It's very important that we don't become too comfortable with being lonely because being too comfortable is just going to make our ability to cope outside even worse. The more we become comfortable living by ourselves, the more it's going to be hard to immerse ourselves in the real world when the pandemic is over. So this is what I recommend. Try to reconnect through Facebook, connect through a lot of your social platforms, do a lot of FaceTime, do a lot of web cameras, do a lot of other programs that are out there that helps you connect. Make sure that you're connecting with your colleagues, make sure that you connect with your friends and your family members that you can see. Make an effort to put a schedule on that every day I'm going to connect to one person that I haven't talked to for a while. Actually, this might even help you because there were a lot of people even on my list that I haven't really seen for a long time. They're on my mind, but I haven't had the time to be able to connect with them. And I had decided that I'm going to connect even if it's a message, even if it's a FaceTime or anything that I am going to do and connect to people I haven't talked to for a while. This is my opportunity to be able to reach out, A, to people I don't, haven't seen for a while, B, to make sure that they're okay and I'm checking up on people that are elderly or family members that are far away, but also this is my way to not become too comfortable with being lonely and isolated and to make sure that my sense of belonging is still being met, even if it's virtual. Virtual is the world that we live in right now. And don't forget that one day we will go back to normal. Of course we will.
but we don't want to go back to normal if normality is going to become abnormality. If you've become so comfortable isolating yourself from the world, then you're not going to have a great time reconnecting. As I said, we all have an innate need to be with other people. We cannot suppress this innate need just by convincing ourselves and getting used to being isolated. This isolation can be deadly. Remember, if you isolate, then slowly you are killing yourself. Remember that belonging is a healthy process and if we can't do it face to face, we do it virtually, we do it, we connect with all of our social medias and platforms to make sure that we are connecting, that people haven't forgotten about us and we haven't forgotten about them. It's not a bad idea. Try it. We got to be flexible at this time. It's a pandemic, but the pandemic should not change our personality and our psychological need. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, on this show, we always try to make it positive.